Over four and a half thousand years ago, the Pharaoh Khufu ordered the construction of the Great Pyramid. What he buried beneath it is, in its own way, every bit as impressive. The amazing thing about this discovery, it is how the Egyptians, 4,600 years ago, constructed this incredible boat. The Khufu ship is the most extraordinary artifact in the world. 13 stories tall, if you stand it on its end, 1,200 parts, and held together with little pieces of wood and a kind of sewing. The site at Giza had been excavated many times. But this find was made by chance. The discovery happened by accident completely. Many of the major discoveries always come with luck. It was 1952. Archaeologist Kamel El Malak was supervising the clear up of an area right by the Great Pyramid. This south of the pyramid was completely covered with debris and stone rubble. Then they began to clean the stone rubble. As they were clearing, they found these large slabs of limestone that were very carefully laid. Curious, El Malak bored a small hole through one of them. When this man came and looked inside, he said to me, I did a smell history. He discovered 41 huge limestone blocks, weighing between 17 and 20 tons. They covered a deep pit over 100 feet long. But it was the contents of the pit that excited Egyptologists. It was this huge pile of wood and rope and oars which gave the game away. Why would Khufu bury a ship in the desert beside his pyramid? The answer tells us how the Egyptians saw death and what the pharaoh believed would happen to him. The pyramid would hold his mortal remains, but his soul would leave. It would be transformed. Khufu was a king and a god. So when he died, he became one with the sun god. Ascending to the heavens, the pharaoh would become one with the sun god Ra. Unified, they would make the sun's daily journey across the sky. They would be carried, the Egyptians believed, in a great boat. The idea of doing that made perfect sense to the Egyptians because they saw the path of the boat as being not flying through the sky, but rather traveling on the rivers that surrounded their whole entire world. In Egyptian thinking, this boat had a clear, practical purpose. It would be used in the afterlife. The Khufu boat was intended to carry its master through the heavens. It played a vital religious role and this is a sign of something else, the fact that boats and water were central to Egyptian life. The Khufu boat is a fabulous testament to the importance of the Nile to the ancient Egyptians. Boats meant the Nile, and the Nile was Egypt. Egyptians relied on the Nile for food, for water, for irrigation, but most of all, they relied on the Nile to move them from place to place. The Nile linked the north and south of Egypt, the Egyptians traded with the outside world via the Nile. It was the wealth the river brought that caused their civilization to grow. The Nile was the most important thing for the Egyptians to make this civilization. And that's why we can say that with the Egyptians, the Nile built ancient Egypt. Treasure, gold and jewels came from Nubia in the far south. The hard granite which built Egypt's finest monuments traveled hundreds of miles by river from Aswan. Pharaohs sent trading expeditions to the land of Punt, a thousand miles to the south. Boat-based trade bore vast resources into the country and allowed the pharaohs of Egypt to build an empire. The importance of boats to ancient Egyptians is clear from wall art all across the country. But artwork cannot reveal the ingenious techniques they use to build such massive vessels. For archaeologists, the discovery of this real boat, perfectly preserved by the manner of its burial, 
is like a time capsule. It looked as if the edges of these timbers had just come out of the shipyard and that not a second had passed over the next 4,500 years. Archaeologists can investigate ancient boat building technology as if they were there at its construction 45 centuries ago. Each of the hull's 1,200 pieces was carved by hand. You have this very complex interlocking jigsaw of the planks themselves. Each piece fit individually and particularly into the piece that was above it, below it, to the ends of it. But it is how these pieces are joined that is remarkable. The Egyptian did not use nails or anything to construct the boats. No screws, no rivets, no glue. This boat is held together by grass. The grass is called halfa, and it's common all over Egypt. There are these long strands of grass, which are very rough, that you rub them together in a particular way, and it forms a very strong, yet flexible rope. Restorers have created a model of the boat at 1 to 100 scale. This is how they used the ropes to construct the joins pieces in the boat. Incredible. The development of this technique offered the Egyptians an advantage over other cultures. At the time that the Khufu ship was built, most other places that we know about were only making dugout canoes out of logs. Sewn plank technology meant the Egyptians could build much larger vessels than other rival cultures. They could carry greater loads, travel greater distances. They could trade throughout the known world. The Egyptians didn't just paddle back and forth on the Nile. They were also fully capable of sailing out into the Mediterranean, places they wanted to go. This was the basis of tremendous economic success. It laid the foundation for 3,000 years of civilization. It helped create one of the most successful superpowers that the world has ever seen. The Khufu boat is the first of Egypt's 10 greatest discoveries because boats sparked the birth of an empire. Wealth brought by supersized boats paid for supersized construction. Egypt built temples and monuments on a scale not matched in antiquity. But these temples and monuments could never have been built if the ancient Egyptians had not mastered the skills needed to quarry stone in vast quantities.